Good morning, Bucks County. How's everybody doing out there today? It is Transformation Tuesday, and I'm bringing a special guest to you today. His name is Ray Ray. Well, I know him as Ray Ray. And I want to give you a little intro to Ray, because I've known him for years. And, and Raymond Ray's he can be considered a mystical creature in the realm of ride-sharing drivers, like an Uber unicorn. Considered to be one of the OGs of Uber X drivers, he continues to drive sporadically in South Jersey and provide as much advice to newbie as well as social commentary on trends for all ride-sharing drivers. Yet, despite his humble opinion of his life, He's done lots of jobs in the army with distinction that he cannot, like, he cannot be considered as a one-trick pony. Rather, his assignments, including combat arms, security for celebrities in the Middle East, and public affairs, including radio DJ and video reporter, which place him as an efficient jack-of-trades journeyman. Yeah, let's unveil the curtain and learn in depth of why he does what he does and why he's been dubbed Uncle Ray Ray. Coming from the Oz's mouth, I have Ray Ray coming on board. And I am thrilled to have this interview with him. I want everyone to sit back and enjoy this conversation as we bring you Uncle Ray Ray. Bucks County, guess who's coming on board? We got Ray Ray coming live to us on the road. Let's listen to some CCR while we're waiting it out. He'll be with us in a few minutes. Ray Ray, he's got stories. Let me tell you. Wait till you, wait till you hear some of the stuff. Uncle Ray Ray, you, you are the best. You, you, you are a survivor. Anybody survives this pandemic, it's you. Take it away, CCR. All right, we are about to call into Uncle Ray Ray. Everyone, let's give him a shout out. Hey, Martha. Ray! It's Ray hey. Ray. It's the man. Oh no! <laughs> I can't oh. believe it's you. I, it's I, me. It's you. I mean, it's been <laughs> it's been a while. I mean, I've been watching you over the years with this yeah. crazy madness of the Uber. I mean, we've we've known each other for many years. 
many, many years. It's I mean, been at I... least seven years. That's when I started, and that's when I met you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it showed me on Facebook uh, our fr our friendery on yeah. Facebook. It says how uh, uh, um, it's been seven years we know each other. I know, I know. <laughs> you think about all these years. I mean, the the crazy beginning of Uber when there was mm. no drivers out there. Remember that? We got into oh, yeah. it. God, it was great. It was it was it's like everyone didn't know us, but everyone wanted to know us. And we, <laughs> And the fact that everybody, everybody heard about us, mm -hmm. but we were like, Uber, we were we like the unicorns of the Jersey Shore? Oh yeah! Remember? Oh, that's right. Remember yeah. we did that first year, first year in New Jersey Shore. There was mm -hmm. Uber opened up. I'll never mm -hmm. forget that summer. That was just <laughs> absolutely oh. crazy. Oh my god! And these are going yeah. back into like we had the few drivers of like. Tim and uh -huh. JC and, and you know Leon, all Dang. these, all these Drew, all these guys that we knew from back in the Philly Uber group, and we uh -huh. were all going down there. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'll you... remember. Do you do you remember the time? Uh, God, uh, when they said, "Well, we're working." I know we're called Uber Philadelphia, but we're not actually working Philadelphia yet. Yeah, <laughs> because the, PP, uh, the PPA said that oh uh, you can't we don't know what we're gonna do with you but then they just hold it and yeah. they strung us along. Well, and... yeah, I, oh God, I remember. <laughs> so uh, while we've got so this is Bucks County Bites, and I know you know okay. that, but I wanted to uh -huh. introduce you to our listeners out there. And you know, we started out this conversation with Uber, and people were like, "Wow, wait a minute, she she was an Uber driver," and I've only really touched <laughs> on that just briefly. <clears throat> Um, oh. But I want you to introduce yourself out there to everybody okay. um, of who you are. And they all know that we've met through Uber. But we'll go okay. into that as we get, go along here. But tell them a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, well, my name is Ray. My, my name is Ray Reyes. Uh, people call me Uncle Ray Ray. And that, that goes along with a story later on. We'll go <laughs> into that. Um, I'm 48 years old. Um uh, I'm a, a retiree from the U.S. Army. Did 25 years. Um, well, 25. They call that 25. I, I, wow. I, I don't. I, my marriage, my first marriage, didn't even last that long. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, that's a long time. It's a long, a long time. time. You've seen uh, a lot. I, yeah. Um, they call that. Uh, I did combat tours, um, but that's that's beside the point. Um, uh, I'm an Uber driver now. Um, I've been in for seven years, about as, as long as you. G gone to the bad, the good, the bad, the ugly with Uber. Um, you know, we gone through the high times, low times. Oh yeah. Stuff. Oh my God. I mean, oh yeah. But I gotta have to say, when when we were doing Uber, it's kind of like a saving grace. I mean, yes, it um, was. I mean, at, uh, I think. Well, uh, let me. Uh, God, it's. Uh, I'm so jumbled right now. But, no, it's um, okay. You have to understand, like Ray, he hasn't told you yet out there, but he uh, just did a mm -hmm. very long trip, and I'm guessing from mm -hmm. the photo you sent me, you're at the Verrazano Bridge. You must have gone yeah. to JFK. Yeah, I, I actually went beyond it. It was like you beyond, went beyond uh, JFK. Beyond JFK, where it's like almost down close to is a Nassau. Oh uh, my uh, gosh, you really went for I a long trip. I could not believe it. I was like, uh, I mean. I just dropped off a short ride, and then all of a sudden, uh, you know how Uber happens to like give you something, and it just blinks. You got like less than thirty seconds to decide whether you want to yes. do it or not. Oh my god! I was like, you know, I just hit, I hit, I hit okay, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> just before I hit it, and I was just glancing on how many minutes the the trip was gonna last. I said, a uh, hundred and. 30 minutes. I was like, oh my God. Oh my and I was like, gosh. And it's 10 o'clock and it's like over two hours. And I was like, oh my God, Martha's going to kill me because I got an interview at once. I know and, that I'm very understanding when it comes to uh, that situation. I mean, you know, I mean, look at all these long <laughs> trips we've done over the years. Even like when we were yeah. doing those long trips on the Uber app. And, yes. you know, and, and the fight, you know, not to get into the Uber thing, but to get in mm -hmm. the money of the tolls and try to get them reimbursed. It was such mm -hmm. a problem. 
all those years, and we lost. We lost a ton of money. I mean, we did. Yes. We lost. Think about our vehicles and everything that we've lost monetarily. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I, how many vehicles we've been through just uh, to do that job? I, I mean, we I could think... have we could have a whole other discussion on just the Uber thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, when we post this and we get it out there, and we'll post it in our Uber groups. And I haven't mm -hmm. been there in a long time because I you know, know my my job went elsewhere from the Uber. It, it mm -hmm. went off into long hauls, and that's what my job ended up being for many years. But and, I, and that's a you know, great job, too. It was I mean, I, I, saw your, <laughs> I saw your pictures and all your travels. I was like, oh, I'm oh. sighing because I feel like the little kid, you know, in, little sickly kid in the winter time while everyone's playing around. Jeez. I was just standing there. Uh. It's like... Look at Martha. Martha's I talking like, about Vegas. Travel but, all over the place. It was just yeah. crazy. But you know, but I think about all the years that you know we had all these great connections with people. Like the group mm -hmm. has changed since then. It's yeah. not the same, of course. But no. there was times. Remember the times when you would post up, and things happened to you, and who came to your rescue <laughs> at like two or three yeah. in the morning? And I oh was even God. home, and I saw them like, oh my gosh, Ray, Ray, Ray needs help. I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> I mean, oh, I don't yeah, know the... how many people we did that to. Like, there was like oh. um, Tanya and yeah, and just and, uh, all Jay -Z. Missy yeah. and Jay Z. Yeah, Jay Damien. Damien. Yeah. Oh, oh like, Damien. Damien, wait, oh, Damien. I miss him. Oh so my much. gosh! So everybody yeah. out there, you know, we've we've really had a really close connection to drivers in yes. this group. And Damien, everyone was this great guy. He was, you know, he yeah. was down on his luck a lot. But we just and, pulled him through. And, I can't and, tell you how many times I helped him food-wise yeah. for his dog, for him, mm -hmm. monetarily. Yeah. I mean, we just pulled it together and helped yeah. other people. You know, he, he got he bounced up. He bounced up. He just came back. Yeah. He came back and then and then he got sick really quickly. He was really sick and then I was yeah. shocked. I was actually on a, a Denver trip when i mm -hmm. got some messages from him he was really really sick and i didn't know yeah. how bad it was and then i came back and i learned that he has passed away yeah it was heartbreaking then i got a hold of some family members it was really tough to mm. to know what he went through and then getting sick on top of it i was sad i was so yeah. sad he, he went he, uh the last time i talked to him was uh uh we had that gathering over at oregon oregon um restaurant everybody uh i think tim was there paul was there yeah um, and all, all the other people all the drivers the paul drew all them guys yeah. yeah we we all sat there and damien was there and i and they invited me and i was like oh it's mm -hmm. like i you know i'm not you know at that time very uh what do you call that i i, I didn't know too many people at that time but they invited me and damien was there and and this was the time when uh remember ppa Oh, you went through that. Okay, you have to oh. tell people about the story, oh. but the PPA, okay. because okay. So, you were one of the fir like the first drivers that had this happen mm -hmm. before we were okay. actually technically legal. Yeah. So in October first, twenty fourteen, um, Uber's told PPA because PPA was dragging their feet and trying to get the license just for Philadelphia. Uber was working all over Pennsylvania, but Philadelphia has its own entity. So what happened was PPA was still dragging with their licenses, and Uber just basically said, you know what, we're just going to start working. So they opened up the, the geofence, and, uh, mm -hmm. Uber and, and Uber and then Lyft later on uh, decided, oh, they're going to work Philadelphia. Well, PPA decided, oh, so you can't do that. You know, we, we, we didn't have anything. But we're going to set up undercover agents to pick up these drivers and and basically suppress the drivers or intimidate the drivers. Oh yeah. From yeah, intimidate the drivers from ever working for Uber, and just and, and it always happens. It's something that's totally different for me. I, Didn't they I usually... open that up when mm -hmm. the uh, the taxi drivers when they lost the medall when the medallions dropped in the prices? Remember? Oh yeah. Because I remember oh, it was yeah. around Halloween. And it was mm -hmm. weird because they're like, oh, we're opening up Philly. And it's like everything mm -hmm. just went crazy that yeah, night. Yeah, the, the tax medallions 
before Uber came in was close to about 500,000, like a half a mil. Yeah. When Uber came in by 20, by the end of 2014, it was like, <clears throat> it was like about maybe 50,000 and still had a, a supply of medallions. And they were dropping in price even less than that. Oh, it was rock bottom. It I mean, did hit rock And the, the insurance, <clears throat> apparently they lost their insurances and all. It was crazy. Yes. It was a crazy time. Oh, yeah. It was very crazy. And that's when they but, started setting up those, the guys for the undercover. Mm -hmm. And that's when matter. you made the news, you made stories. Yeah. You oh were covered. God. Yes. I was covered by CBS. Yes, you were. <laughs> oh, my God. A lot and, of newspapers, media, you were all over the place. <coughs> yeah, I was like the poster child for Uber. Yes, you, know, you but, were. <laughs> I think PPA, he even had a lot of poster of me. <laughs> I believe when we do my when we put the YouTube together, I'm gonna to put these photos into the YouTube channel because you have a YouTube for podcast. Yeah. So they'll be able to see these photos of you. And I've got you know we've got oh quite a God. collection over the years, and it'll yeah. be fun to do. Um, but it's a lot of memories that you went through with that. Yeah. It, I mean, tell them, tell uh -huh. the listeners out there what you went through that first <clears throat> when you got the first undercover. Oh, yeah. So. Um, I picked them up. Uh, it was at Center City. Uh, it was in the. It was morning time on a Saturday, and um, we call that. It was two, two, two people. Uh, one. It was a couple, and they were wearing eagle shirts, green <laughs> eagle shirts. Wow. <coughs> so, uh, as soon as I picked them up from Center City, <laughs> excuse me. <coughs> That's all right. You've been on a road trip for a while. It's okay. Yeah. So I picked I picked them up, and they wanted to go to Northeast Philly at Chicken Pete's. Oh, so is that where they I was went? Like, yeah, that's where they went. I remember that like like it was yesterday. So throughout the trip, you know, they were asking all kinds of questions like, "Do you like Uber? You know, is Uber <laughs> treating you right? You know." And then oh, it, it just kind of, it kind of like turned a little silly. You know, they they start talking. All kinds of smack about, oh yeah, PPS is jerks and stuff. Like oh, that. so they were cutting the PPA <laughs> down. Yeah, they were cut. Oh, I was like, this is terrible. I was like, you know, they was like, oh, if I see PPA people, I I just want to break their their face. It's like, hmm, okay. So I kind of kind of mellowed down on the on the dramatics and stuff, uh, but they just kept on going and going. So finally, we made it to Chicken Pete's. And Chicken Pete's, it was still empty, okay. but it was open. It was a very open parking lot and everything. Mm -hmm. And just as soon as I like even put the car in park and I unlocked the doors, they bailed. Like they 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 think they were going to like um, we call that skip a ride or something like that. So I was like, this oh, is so kind of. They just bailed. Like you thought they were like just <clears throat> not gonna either gonna bail or not gonna pay for their trip. All this stuff. They just jumped yeah. out of the car. They jump out of the car, and I was like, "This is kind of weird." It's like they're gonna pay me a credit card. So, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, uh, this guy uh, tries to open up my, you know, and it was like a really big, burly guy. And I was like, "Uh oh, this is crazy." Oh. You know, I'm thinking I'm getting. I thought I was getting card check. So, but he uh, somehow he he unlocked the door, and he was reaching out for my keys. Oh my gosh. To start the car, I said, like, "Oh God, I'm I'm getting carjacked." Oh my gosh, you're getting carjacked. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm scary. beating him, but so I was beating, yeah, I was beating him. I was like rabbit punching him in the back of the head, and all of a sudden, my driver door starts flinging in, and there was a Philadelphia police woman. Oh my with gosh! A, with a with a with a, with a with a her hand on the on her holster. Oh, so all I have to so do, scary, I, right? I was like, "Okay, here we go." <laughs> He's like, "What's going on?" You know, and. Uh, then the PPA inspectors came in and they said, "Hey, you know, uh, you know, you know, you're running an illegal taxi service." I was like, "I was like, am I being arrested?" And I was like, "Well, we don't have the authority." I was like, "Well, then you're you're infringing on my rights and stuff." I was like, "It's like we might be, but they you're even... you're running, yeah, we're, we're you're running an illegal, so we have to in, impound the car." I was like. Oh, wow. Wait a minute. It's like, do you have the authority? If, you know, but then the Philadelphia police woman says, "Well, if you, if you, we could detain you, 
And I was like, um, okay. Okay. You know, so they gave me the ticket. And they impounded my car. You know, so I didn't want to have any type yeah. of drama. But it, it turned out to be a little bit more interesting when they took the car. And then they like, they took the, uh, at that time, the, uh, the, the Uber gave us those iPhones that we got. Yeah, you know, we the, were given iPhones from Uber. Yep. Yes. Yep. And they took that, and they took my cell phone. That's like, took wait your a minute. Cell phone, and they my took personal the phone. Yep. And it's like, why are you taking my cell phone? That's that's uh that's illegal search and seizure. Oh my god. And they said, how do you know so much about this law and everything? It's like, well, I used to, I used to work in uh, at, at Brooklyn District Attorney as an investigator. So they like, oh well, you know, this is not Brooklyn. I was like, well then, you know, you got to mm-hmm. give me back my cell phone. For some reason, they drained my battery up down to like two percent. Oh my gosh! Reason. They drained it. I mean, they, uh, you know, I had to make sure that the, the car was set there. There was no scratches in my car, and I was like, "Wow!" And then, and they they drained my phone to a point I had only just enough energy to make a phone call. And then they said, "They says, okay, well, uh, you'll have your day in court." And uh, I was like, "Well, are you going to take me to at least to a, a bus station?" It's like. It's like, no, why don't you call an Uber? They said they said that Yeah, you. they were oh so jerks. They, wow. the, they left me in Northeast Philly so with cruel. no car. And, and sure enough, I, I, I called I called the Uber, and uh, they gave me an Uber Black. They Probably did? Uber, like, Uber you Uber Black back then? <clears throat> yeah, they, they sent me an Uber Black. I mean, they treated, they treated me like a, like a hero. And as soon as I got... Uh, yeah. You know where where uh, the old Uber headquarters was at, at yeah at, uh, the old headquarters yes yeah right by Center City, uh, so I'm going up the stairs and everyone started clapping, and like they were like <laughs> You're like a hero. Was like, Our heroes <laughs> welcome. I was like whoa wait a minute you know I don't need the dramatics and stuff so uh, immediately they put me at the uh, at the conference table and you know I had to give a debrief you know what exactly happened. So they said, okay. So I was like, look, I, I don't have a car. That's my only car I have. And you know what they did? And I, I, this is the greatest thing about Uber. I don't know about Uber nowadays, but back in, back in back the days. Back then, it was so different. Yeah, they, they took treated care of us. Like, they really yeah, did. They did. So they gave me, first they were going to give me like a, a an iPhone that had all types of credits. So if I had to get to a doctor's appointment, which I did, like, yeah. Uh, they they would give it. It didn't work. So they said, "Okay, tell us your telephone number." I gave them a telephone number, and they put uh, they put fifteen hundred credits. Oh my gosh! Oh my god! I was like, "Whoa!" I think that's too much. Wow! And I was like, "But and they they treated me to they treated me to a dinner. It was a really good dinner too." And they says, "Here's our tel- here's our personal telephone." And John Fielding, the the GM of Philadelphia, says, "Here's my here's my cell phone number. Wow. Anything you need." You give me a call if you if you need to pay bills. You give me a call, or something like that. Oh and which gosh. I did. I actually did. I actually did. He did. He did help me. He I, helped you I, out. He helped me out. So that's incredible. He told, the stories. He, oh wait, but then here's here's the big thing. He says, okay, so they told me, oh yeah, well, this was on a Friday, so we were supposed to have a court Monday, but PPA was dragging their feet and stuff like that. It lasted three weeks oh my god oh i had no car for three weeks you know i had so you no... weren't even working during that whole no. time you were dealing with this ppa stuff nope no, that, no, that's they... really tough and those are tough times but you know uber was yeah. good then compared to what mm-hmm. they're going through now it was yeah. a different time yes and it we were different you know good. people back then we were so connected like if you look oh, at yeah. the group today, it's not like that. Not like it was. No. It's no, really it's... changed, and we've been we've all been through a lot over those last seven years. Mm-hmm. We really have. But you know, you were you were the person everybody knew. Everybody knew Ray Ray. <laughs> I mean, yeah. we'd all go on the group. You know, Tim would make his videos. You'd be in there. And you'd be everybody was sharing these crazy stories of what we went through. It was uh, it was crazy times. I mean, and now we got 2020 and, you know, 2020 is drunk. Like, go home, ah, 2020. Yes. It's like, oh, you know, crazy God. times then. Now we've got a whole different, you know, situation. 
yeah. you know, and yeah. you're still you're still working for Uber, right? Yeah, I I started back on Uber uh, after the unemployment, the, the federal pandemic. Uh, so funds that's what I was going to ask you. So okay. you've been so how is Uber since you're still working for them? Um, how is the how have they been treating you during this whole pandemic? Like you, mm -hmm. you probably stopped like everybody else. They everybody's getting unemployment. You know, thirty mm -hmm. million Americans out there, they're getting unemployment. <clears throat> but you collected that for a long time too, and you yes. weren't working because it was really not safe to do so. And you know, and still yeah. you have to be careful. Yeah. So, um, so, so uh, the pandemic started in March. I continued to work all the way up to mid-april oh you did and yeah i did work because i um i was waiting for unemployment to work but unemployment yeah. was still dragging their oh, feet yeah. so what happened was i continued to work i was still picking up passengers um and my doctor who works in the va hospital in brooklyn <clears throat> kept monitoring me and such and so what happened like uh, I, I was told to come in to Brooklyn to do a blood my blood test to check my, my sugar levels okay. and such. I'm 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 also a high risk health issue because I'm diabetic and stuff. Oh, you so, are. That's right. Because yeah. being diabetic, you really have to be careful because <clears throat> if you would get sick, I mean that could that would take you to take your life yeah. because it, you're a high risk. Yes. So. My doctor and my nurse, God bless them, they, they're like the only doctors that ever like really take care of their people. So my doctor, uh, I, I took the blood test and my doctor went on vacation to go to Bahamas. So on the day that he, she, he got the results, he called me through a sat phone, a satellite phone oh, and, and really, really digged on me. And he was like, Ray, what the hell's going on with your blood work? It's like you're all over the charts. Wow. Oh, he it's like, Doc, are you are you really on your vacation? It's like, yes, I am. It's like, I like, I don't normally talk to, to to patients like this, but you know, I really care about you. But if you're not gonna take care of yourself, uh, you know, I'm gonna just send my paperwork to Philadelphia, <laughs> uh -huh. and that's and that's the way to motivate me. I will never have VA Philadelphia take care of me. Oh. Um, but that's a, that's another story. That's gonna but, say that's probably a very interesting, uh, yeah. very interesting story with them. It's, it's very, yeah. So the doc uh, told me uh, I'm gonna have to self quarantine you. I was like, "Oh, please, oh. doc, don't don't do this to me." I was like, "I I gotta let I can't do this because, you know, despite, you know, your your levels and stuff like yeah, that, you had to get I, so you're self quarantined. They self quarantined yeah. you. Yeah. So, uh, which actually helped me a lot because when, when it did came for unemployment to find out, you know, like, hey, you know, what's your situation, mm -hmm. and you know, on the unemployment, they you have to check the mark that you uh, a, a a uh, health worker, right? Or, yeah, a health person has put you on a self quarantine, and that was a that was the the one that gave unemployment my unemployment status and stuff. Yeah, so that's so, when that's when you started collecting your unemployment at that point. Yep, yep. So, okay. Um, so and uh, prior to the self quarantine, I I did take every week I take the free uh, coronavirus test. Oh, you uh, did. You know, so you were yeah, testing that, yourself every week. Every week, I, I didn't care if I had to do it for a week, and it, it came up on negative. Okay, so you're negative. I was negative. So, but, so you've never um, tested positive at all for you know, considering you were driving no. for you know Uber and you had all these people in mm -hmm. your car and you were staying safe, so you'd wear your mask. I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. And did you oh, have was... anything between you and the passengers? No, I had I, I don't have a partition, okay. but uh, every other time, every other customer, I can I got the hand sanitizers you and the car. I yeah I cleaned the belts, the door, oh my you gosh. Know, I vacuumed everything, <clears throat> you know, and um, I I there I, I just it was just uh it was just scary sometimes. Yeah, and, yeah, um, I can't imagine. I thought about it because you know there's times I would just you know because I've been home for months because there's been no mm -hmm. work for my end. Um, but yeah. I would look on the Uber app, and there would be no drivers. <laughs> there is just nothing Yo, out yeah. there. Yeah, 
Oh, there okay. was uh, probably very few that were still working. And then the, the ones out few. there, you probably weren't even getting any work because there was just nobody going anywhere. Oh, no. That's, 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 just, no, no. There were a lot of people. Oh, so there workers. were people out there, but oh, they yeah. weren't traveling as far as the airports go, right? Uh, well, at, at times I would like hang out in an airport and there would be like onesies and twosies, you know. Be uh, I go to, uh, like once, yeah. Oh, there is one. <laughs> there is one pastor I picked up at uh, at the airport. Had to go all the way to Harrisburg. You took them to Harrisburg. Yep. Yep. So there was, were people uh, traveling, but they were traveling different. So they would travel by car. Yeah, they traveled by Uber. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, the uh, the pastor. I won't name names. Of no, course, no, but, of course. No, but uh, the, this this uh, lady <laughs> had. Uh, a social call. <laughs> so, oh, oh, oh yeah, no! Yeah. What? Yeah, she had a social call. Uh, you know, so she came all the way from oh. Las Vegas. <laughs> she came all the way from Las Vegas to go to Philadelphia. No. To to Harris. Yes. <sighs> I was, I was, and you know, she was like talking to her, um, I guess her madame. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and she's like, uh, uh, "I need the picture of the guy." Oh my and gosh! Like, and All I'm the things this, that I'm we like, see yeah. in here. <laughs> I was like, "Oh my god! What's oh going my on?" God. Like, I, I, I'm, still... I'm, uh, I'm the driver of the of the of the lady. <laughs> oh wait! I, all right, now you got me thinking. How yeah. do you? Okay, I'm picturing uh -huh. this. You got this lady okay. who's coming in for a job, quote, a job. Yeah. So, yeah. oh, wait, it's pandemic. Are, is she wearing a mask when she's going out there and doing these jobs? I mean, come on. No. No, that's no. not happening. No. Come on. Yeah. This was, oh, my this gosh. Was We're turning our G-rated show into something. <laughs> 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 oh, but... I, I, try to be, I try to be PG now. With the, with, <laughs> We're doing but, PG. Yeah, but, but, but yet, you know, oh, my God. I, and and she tipped. Well, she did. She tipped. She tipped me well. Oh my you know, gosh! So she gave me a, an, an additional hundred dollars. Oh I my like, gosh! I, I looked at the app. It's like, oh my god! I was like, oh wow! It's, it's like, thank you. It's like, <laughs> and I really need that hundred because I wasn't. I wasn't getting. Oh yeah, so much, you weren't getting yeah. the jobs. You were. So you no. were very thankful for that woman coming in from Vegas and doing yeah. a job. <laughs> yeah. The 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 the, uh, the price was. Plus, it was two hundred plus an additional to so Harrisburg. Yeah, Harrisburg. Yeah, from Philadelphia. Oh, oh right! So, wow. What, what stories you have? I mean, you uh, haven't even know. we haven't even touched. <laughs> All right, so we, uh -huh. you have such Uber stories, and we're gonna have to we're gonna have to do a series just on your yeah. Uber stuff because <laughs> you have so much. Uh, um, but uh, I wanted to cover a little bit about uh -huh. your military background. So okay. I started your intro out, uh -huh. and uh -huh. this this tune that I had put on ah, that you requested I and I want to talk a little bit about your military backgrounds um, okay. going back in the days of like, oh. Fort Meade because I did uh -huh. research Noelle so and she's uh -huh. still she's still alive she's living uh -huh. and she's 79 yeah. years old so tell me a little yeah. bit about the tune that I started it out with oh oh uh that's uh Chris Noelle starts off her show saying uh hi love Every time she has been doing it, uh, she was working at the Armed Forces Radio uh, TV Services mm -hmm. from '67 to '71. So during the heydays, the big the big days of Vietnam, uh, the best comfort for the military military people was her uh, every or like one hour on a Thursday or Tuesday, oh. and. Everyone will be listening. Every people will be listening to her. So she and had a she, broadcast show. Is that what she mm -hmm. did? Yeah, she has a broadcast show, and she did twice a week, twice a week, and it's it's on a radio. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, it's on the radio, but uh, it's actually pre-recorded, just like you know how how uh, you okay. know. Okay. Yeah, and and they will play the record with Chris Noel playing like one hour of just all kinds of tunes. From show tunes to rock to soul. Oh to wow! Everything. So that she, was really the, the yeah. that really kept the troops going. Oh yeah, yeah. and and you you talk to any Vietnam vet or yeah any Vietnam vet, yeah. uh, they'll say that I was like Chris Noel would would get, save my life. You know that's the something that I wow, and that's this amazing. Was, yeah, when I did talk to her uh, during my training, uh, she was one of the guest speakers and such mm. and. She 
you know, I, I was like, I would uh, uh, talk about celebrities. Uh, I'm not usually like starstruck on celebrities, but <laughs> when I heard Chris Noel, I like went gaga. I was like, oh, See, my oh God. your knees got all melted, oh, and yeah. you're like, oh, you're just like, and she your was like, your body about, just collapsed. Yeah. She was like about 60, but she looked like a great MILF. I mean, wow. or GILF now. Oh, my God. Oh. I was like, so when I saw her, I was like, oh, it's Chris Noel. I was like, and everyone's like, wow, Ray, you never were wow. talking about it. It's like, yes, yeah, Chris Noel. It's like, and then everyone's like, who, who is she? And when she did the guest speaker and everyone got to know her, you know, like uh, utmost respect. But I, I already had the added advantage of who, who she was. So yeah. I got to talk to her and she would tell me, and I'm like, uh, yeah, all the Vietnam vets would come to me and say, it's like, can you say hi, love? And, and she would sing it with that. <laughs> oh, my God. And guys would just, like, go gaga oh or they'd gosh. cry. Yeah. It's amazing and... that you did. You got to meet her and talk to her. And think about oh you. God. She's still around. I did mm -hmm. some research on her. And she's, she living in, she's living in Florida. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, she she has a nonprofit uh, for homeless veterans. Oh, she does? Yeah, she does. She still she still does it. She's she still she goes involved. there. Yeah, yeah, still involved. Uh, I call that. Uh, she the the greatest thing about her was the fact that she could she could have been the next Marilyn Monroe, oh, wow. and but then she saw uh, when she came to one of the VA hospitals to see the the conditions that veterans have and yeah. so demoralized, she devoted her life. To make sure veterans are, are that, actually that's happy. That's incredible. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. And did she did she help you start? Because you did radio broadcasting yourself while in the military, right? Mm -hmm. So yes, did I she did. help you on that way? On that did you um, did you do the well, radio broadcasting because you got involved like knowing her and? Well, I didn't. I didn't get to know Chris Noel until. Um, let me see. I, I saw China Beach. Remember that TV show yeah, China Beach? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she was featured in China Beach, and I was like, who's this girl? And this was in the 90s, and this is before okay. I even knew about uh, a, uh, AFN, Armed Force Network. So I, I, uh, back in the days in the 90s, we didn't have internet. So, you know, I had to go to the library, you know, back in the days. Oh, my like, gosh, this is going back to the days before <laughs> we had this stuff. You had yeah. to go to the library. <laughs> you got to go to the library, and you had to do all these – two. you had to wait two weeks for books and stuff like that. And I got to – listen to her and later on um i was interned in frankfurt germany as a uh you know to go become a radio announcer right i interned and they showed us this big library i mean it's oh god I, it's very huge I, I mean it had every type of record that you uh, they oh, showed wow. me the beatles oh my god and one of them i saw chris noel and i listened to it and i was like oh my god this is she i was like and you know i just fell in love with the voice it, but i never got to see the picture until oh, like until... when the internet until the internet came in and then oh, that's interesting <laughs> and, and i told this to chris noel uh, to, to 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 chris and uh, she's like oh my god it's like you're like the the youngest fan I ever had. <laughs> and funny. I was like, well, yeah. Do you think so, she'd remember you today if, you know, I, you would meet her I, um, just mm. by chance and she'd be somewhere? Would you think, you know, you could bring up those, you know, bring up those memories and see if she remember you? Oh, I, I don't <laughs> know. I, I, I should be like, a, oh, my God, it's Ray, uh, that, that stalker <laughs> guy. No, get, get, get rid of him. I got to... I got, I got to, uh, I got to order protection against him. Get this, get this guy. Away. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I hope so. I, I really she do. She probably would. She probably would. She probably would. would. I, I, a lot of people say, you know, they, they hear my voice. Sometimes they see my, uh, my old commercials at AFN mm -hmm. and they would say, Oh my God, are you, were you the guy who did those funny commercials? Like, uh, yeah. I was like, oh my God, you're, you're oh, great. See, people like, do uh, know you. They oh my God, you. yeah. Some people, <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, oh, oh, one guy comes up and says, like, wait a minute, I don't recognize the face, but can you say something like funny? Like, hi, I'm Ray. And I was like, oh yeah, you're the guy on the radio back <laughs> in Afghanistan. Him. Oh my God! It's like, hey, put put your hand right there on, on, against your face. It's like, yep, yeah, that's him. That's him. Oh, they see. You're the voice. You do. You have a you do have a following out there. You just don't know it. 
They're oh, out there. You got not. you got your uh, Uber people following you. You got, yeah. to, you got military people that remember you. <clears throat> yeah. That, oh that's my God. A good, that's a great thing. You, you're oh. well known out there for many things. Yeah. Oh, for many, many things. things. Yeah. Uh, the, the worst thing about it, I I was always told um, early on. I think my dad talked me. It's like don't ever be a win, one trick pony, uh, because <laughs> being a one trick pony, you only do one one trick, and everyone's gonna remember you. But that's all they're gonna remember you. That's the so, one trick pony. That, yeah, that was my and, intro to you about the one trick oh, pony. Did. Yeah, so I oh, gave you, you a nice in, wait till you oh. wait till you hear this this whole thing put together. <laughs> Oh, I mean, you got that... Chris Noel in the beginning, and then I yeah. did an intro for you. You're really going to uh -huh. like it. And then, you know, we've got our yeah. interview here, but I put mm -hmm. some CCR in there for a little background oh, while yeah. I was calling you. And then yes. we'll end the show with um, a couple of things. So it is, uh -huh. you know, it's kind of cool to have it done. And, and one mm -hmm. of the things we'll do is if you've got something you want to tell people out there that, you know, do you uh -huh. have links? Do you have something like... You know, some people have GoFundMe pages, support pages. Some people have their uh -huh. websites. They have their businesses, their Facebook, and other Instagram. If there's anything like that that you want there, that's uh, getting, it can be put in there for any, you know, for anything. Well, you know, I, uh, well, I am writing a historical fiction book soon. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, then we will that. make sure that is mentioned yeah. in there. And if you have. Like I said, if you have a website of any sorts, but if your Facebook mm -hmm. page will have that information there, we'll put your yeah. Facebook page link okay. there that people can see you. I know you probably, you know, might not uh -huh. take everybody's friend request. Oh, yeah. But, uh, you know, if you make a yeah. separate page for yourself, then you could have that. I and, sure you know, hope. Especially <laughs> for your book. If you're going to put a book out there, make sure you have a separate page for your whether it's an Instagram or a Facebook yeah. business page for yourself, and it'd be good. Well, for definitely, to I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you a free copy. It's actually it's a three book series. So, oh wow! Uh, can I can I talk a little bit about it? Oh yeah, definitely. Mind? I didn't even realize oh. you were doing it. So go ahead, tell yeah, me about I was gonna, it. Yeah, uh, uh, well, it's a it's it's a historical fiction, and basically the premise of the of the of the fiction book is, it's like. The generation generation X, Forrest Gump. Oh, oh wow. I know, I know. The baby boomers had Forrest Gump himself, and the millennials, mm -hmm. you know, they're still too young. So now, us, our generation, the Generation mm -hmm. X generation, needs to have some sort of a a a a, a, a tall a, a tall tailed, you know, just like Forrest Gump. You know? Right, right. Uh, so the premise is, uh, it's it's true and dear to my heart it's like a semi-autobiography you know um okay. so it's gonna takes uh a couple uh a, a boy and a girl of course and um uh, they um they're high school sweetheart well they're high school sweethearts and they realize that they went into the army about the same time <laughs> oh they're both army yeah, they're both army, but they never told each other because, you know, like they weren't, they didn't want to like basically break their hearts, uh -huh. but they, they managed, they, they find out through going through the army that they were at the same basic training and then the same job, which is broadcast journalists, which is basically true to dear in my heart. And it's going to expand about uh, almost, almost 20 years uh, wow. of them. Yeah. And throughout the whole th throughout the whole uh book series it's it's hopefully going to be three books but uh it, they're going to be like a soundtrack you know like oh. uh the first book is called right here waiting and if you heard that song you've heard that yeah song. i heard that song yes yeah that's that's the title of the first book is right okay. here waiting and uh, that's the their very first song uh when they're together oh right it's waiting. just like the story mm -hmm. that you're writing. I can't wait to yeah. get it. Oh, I can't wait to read it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh my god. It in uh, oh my god. It's 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 uh, You know, I'll, you I'll... do have you do mm -hmm. have a way of writing because over yeah. the years that you would do these posts and I always look forward to reading it because you always have oh, a way wow. of writing. And yeah. if you've got that gift of writing, which you do, uh -huh. then you definitely need to put it out there and and you need to get those books published. 
Yeah. And when you do, make sure you turn into an ebook. Make sure you do audio, <clears throat> because that's yeah. also what I do. You know, I do help people with their ebooks and with their audio voiceovers, because mm -hmm. I have um. So I have a way of doing audio voiceovers without my voice. So everything's really? done with AI, and I can pick male, female, English, uh -huh. whatever I want, and it sounds just like a real voice. Well, I'm hoping you play the girl. <laughs> play the girl. You, you play the girl. I, I, I'm trying to find Tom Cruise to play the guy. Oh, Tom if Cruise. I get him to, yes. We can turn that into him. Once the movies come back, maybe you can turn oh it into God. a movie. Be, I really think it's going to be either a TV series or, or, or a movie. If it's going to be a TV series, it's going to be as good as Breaking Bad. Yeah, it would be great if you turn it into a TV series. That would be great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Especially yeah. the way I think things are being done now. The movie yeah. is just, it's going to take a while for things to come back. Yeah. So like, getting it into a series would be great, to a, a TV yeah. series. But, well, you know, knock on wood. Oh. Knock on wood, I'm just hoping that it would. And, you know, I'm I'm hoping that uh, uh, I'll, I'll get Chris Noel to go back to movies. Again. Oh, that would be Maybe wonderful. she'd be like, uh, I, I won't make her as a grandma. I'll no, no. But, yeah, make sure I have the title of those books that you are writing so I can put that yeah. in. So when I create this, when uh -huh. I do the podcast, so it goes uh -huh. in like 12 or 13 platforms and I'm just getting into Pandora uh -huh. now. Oh, so that, okay. yeah, it's on all of them. It's all on the big ones. So that mm -hmm. information goes in there that they can see it. And then there's mm -hmm. a, like I said, if there's a link, I can add the link. But if I have the titles of those books that are you're doing. I'm going to put mm -hmm. those in there so people can look back. And I like to do follow-ups, too. Um, as you know, there's a couple people I need to do follow-ups. I have my vaccine yeah. participant who's got his second shot. And I have to talk to him. Um, mm -hmm. I'll be doing another follow-up with you just okay. on your books. And I would mm -hmm. love to hear more about it as you progress. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping by December, uh, at least oh, book really? one. Wow, so you book get the one first or book one? two, yeah, maybe book one. I definitely book okay. one will will be in the can sometime before Christmas. And... Oh, that would be no, that'd be great for the holidays, especially oh. if we go through a second week go through oh, a second God. wave of the pandemic. Oh, I may have to generate that book to be like one large oh. big novel, like Gone with the Wind or I Worn just, Peace. Or something. I just don't know. I mean, that's a whole other subject we could get into. We don't know. Yeah. We don't really don't know what's going to happen yet. I mean, yeah. We got the schools going on and you know, people are, yeah, they're getting, they're getting sick and we don't yeah. know. I mean, like, I don't want to get into that. We'll be on for two hours and the listeners will, <laughs> yeah. once they start hearing <laughs> politics or they hear more coronavirus, oh, no. they'll be dropping out. <laughs> That's the last thing I want to hear in, a, in, in the Uber car is politics. Oh, uh, no. We, we always oh, have God. rules. Oh, rules were oh, two rules. rules. No like, yeah. politics, no religion. No religion. No None. No, we just never got into that. I mean, I, we always kept it just basic conversations, and, and I was pretty good oh, about yeah. that. We never got into it. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, I do miss it. those days, though. I do miss... Really? I miss the people, and that's one of the reasons I started this podcast, because yeah. I don't have the social that I had before. The people oh. are missing. I got to talk to people, and this way I'm, mm -hmm. I'm getting to call all these people. I interview all these people. It's great. Mm -hmm. And, wow. you know, it's getting noticed, and that's what we want. We want people to subscribe to it, to download it, and we want mm -hmm. people to notice. And it's helping so many individuals and, and businesses. It's helping yeah. the people talk and talk about the problems out there. So, mm -hmm. and, and if you have a business, yeah. it gets promoted and it gets out there, advertised. On mm -hmm. your end, you know, we'll we'll do a, once with the books, we can do a promo and say, hey, Ray Ray has these books coming out. <laughs> Keep an eye on him. I I gotta I gotta visit Bucks Bucks County first because you guys are like the, you know, you, I gotta <laughs> you go and, and yeah I gotta come in there. That's gonna be my first book tour spot is Bucks County. Oh yeah, too. Bucks County is really good for that. I mean everybody loves, yeah? especially if you go to New Hope, get into oh, Newtown, yeah. get into Doylestown. Oh, yeah. You know it is it's people love their books and it's a nice it's a nice area mm -hmm. up here it's a nice setting oh yeah it's beautiful although uh, although i have to say we do have uh -huh. a notorious background of gangs that used to run here back in the 1800s really and uh, one of the you're going to want to check this one podcast out when yeah. it comes out 
So there's uh -huh. this group called the American Outlaws, and they're producing oh. a movie, which they are on hold right now because of the pandemic. Uh -huh. It's all yeah. about the Doan Gang. You know, and mm. all the people that I've talked to, like, they're going to be coming on for a Halloween, kind of like a Halloween special. We're going to kind of yeah. tie it together because it is really kind of weird and to hear about what they used to do back then. It's very yeah. historical and very true to life. Um, wow, I didn't know. Yeah, no, okay. well, and then you think about the last couple of years, we've had interesting things happen up here. We've had people on the loose and on the run. Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, and then you think about the Bucks County, the mm -hmm. boys of Bucks County, yeah, the the murder, mm -hmm. the trial, all that stuff that's happened. Jeez, that yeah. happened actually when I was driving back in Uber. One of the last mm -hmm. few times I think I was driving through them, I remember seeing all these cops and the hell. Uh -huh. I'm like, what? What's going on? I didn't even realize. Uh -huh. I didn't know. <laughs> And then I find out oh. later, like all this, oh, it was horrible. These murders that oh. happened in that farm oh. was just completely. It was yes. locked down because they. Wow. Were just, oh yeah, and they did it. They did a special on that on on the TV. TV oh, like forty eight hours. Another forty eight. Yeah, hours it was on. Like, oh. um, I'll have to send it to you, but it was um, yeah. some kind of trial thing that they did. It was a special on the Bucks County boys. I'll have to give oh, you that the, information. Was it the one? Was it the one that the guy was like a psychopath? Yes. Two guys come in. They were trying to do a, a marijuana deal. It yes, went it south. Yes, it was that guy. And he just killed him. Oh, my God. Yes, oh. it was horrible. Oh, and that's, that's like literally down. It's down the road. I mean, it is this, oh. it's a notorious area for stuff that happens, like weird stuff. It's in the water, isn't it? It's, it's got to be. It's in the soil. <laughs> it's in the soil. It's in the soil. <laughs> Upper Bucks oh. County only, not lower. <laughs> <laughs> Although you could ask Tim that, he'll disagree with you. He'll tell you, uh, "No, oh, it's down here at Lower we're gonna, Bucks." <laughs> we're gonna we have to talk to Tim about this. Well, one I am too. trying to work on Tim right now. I'm trying to get uh, him on because he's our foodie. He knows yeah. food. He knows where to go, and we need him uh, on here. Now I've had yes. Britt. Britt was on Britt from uh -huh. around town. She did a great yeah. interview. She's our uh, local, like her local Bucks County blog, and she's involved with Pine uh -huh. to Pink with the cancer. Um, so oh, she she was man. really good on this. So we've got interesting guests that do help others out there, um, but mm -hmm. Tim, <laughs> but help yeah, with we the need, food. <laughs> we need a food food we critic here. Food crit yeah, he would be on those videos <laughs> on the Uber videos that we yeah. would watch him talk about all uh -huh. his food that he would get and talk about these crazy uber drives and <laughs> miss those days. Oh, oh my god yeah we when when he did his facebook live and everything uh, oh, i yeah. called in <laughs> i called in you saw that right yes. oh my god we we're like two peas in a pod and everything i was like you guys uh, were good i mean you get you kept us entertained right and yeah. your your post that you did <laughs> yeah you kept us going out there yeah, yeah. I, I still try to help them. I, I love mentoring. That's the best thing about You do help. Yeah, yeah. so you're out yeah. there. You do help these yeah. upcoming drivers that are in mm -hmm. there or, and ones that have a lot of questions. Damon used to do that, too. Oh, you, yeah. You guys were good with that, helping others. We did have butt heads a couple of times. Yeah, David everybody did. butted yeah. heads. <laughs> everybody did with Dave. Damon was very, he was point blank, there it is. If you don't like yeah. it, that's what he yeah. did. He's yeah. like, yeah, and you know, he he never was he was he was he into unions or not? I don't, I think, he don't was. think so. I don't yeah. think he and was. I, I was kind of like trying to on the border borderline with unions because you know, yeah, the thing about Uber about this. Oh, oh, we were talking. Oh, you wanted to. I don't know if you have enough time, but we were talking about how uh, the California with their trying to get oh, in, employment right. and independent. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Um, and this was like seven years ago. We were just talking about that. Uh, me and Damon were just talking about the pros and cons of having a union. Yeah. And, stuff. and Damon, I think Damon did not want a union either. But I, I, I was probably like, so. yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think so. My take on that is uh, I, a union is good when, I mean, if we could keep ourselves classified as independent contractors, yes. but we need a union to for due process i think because... they need a union i absolutely do i, I believe in yeah. unions that they do protect 
I mean, you think about all the transportation industry, the aviation mm -hmm. industry, anything. They have unions, mm -hmm. and they are there to help those people. Yeah. And I believe I mean, Uber should have it. But the problem is if you're not you're not classified as a, <clears throat> an employee. Yeah. And that's, yeah, what, you know, California is like, they're always the leaders out there. The drivers yeah. take it, and they, get, and they win. So yeah. they're the ones that are going to lead the way for everybody but, else but here's the thing martha i mean if if california puts those people in employees mm -hmm. uber and lyft like any other big businesses like ford and chrysler they're going to take their business outside elsewhere yes you're you know, right you know what i'm saying right. and th look what happened to chrysler and ford they yes. union members it's like okay you we're going to take our business. We're going to, you know, and NAFTA, thank God we took NAFTA out. But, yeah. you know, now when California says, okay, you are classified on employees and Uber's going to say, Uber and Lyft's going to say, okay, well, you're classified as employees. We'll, we'll just move our business elsewhere. You're right. They headquarters. probably would do that. Um, and it's you know? hard to say what they'll do right now with, because I know that they've lost millions, if not billions of dollars right now with this yeah. crisis. So it may be a time to move in there and do it. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. I mean, we don't know what I, California yeah. is thinking, what the drivers want. No. Um, I do mm -hmm. know one guy that's out there, and he's considered the six-star Uber driver. Mm -hmm. And I might have to six star. Get... Yeah, yeah, he's one of the rare. One of the he's actually more of a spokesperson for Uber. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Kindred Shepherd, who is not, don't think he's in your uh, Philly group, but he was in the National yeah. Uber Driver Group, which has probably a hundred thousand yeah. people, if not more. Mm -hmm. um he he and i talk every once in a while and i was just yeah. out in san francisco myself and didn't even yeah. think i should contact him when i was out there but he oh. has a lot to say when it comes to all the politics and everything what does he that's have? going on what's his take what do you think he's taking? kindred i you know what he is probably mixed on it right now with everything going oh. he's got so many worries we got fires you got major, mm -hmm. major problems out in the West Coast right now. They high end yeah. coronavirus fires yeah. are destroying so much out there and I have to get a hold of him because he hasn't been posting yeah. much on his Instagram other than mm -hmm. I know he lost his puppy, his dog. <gasps> and that oh. was devastating. He had um I believe she had cancer. So he lost yeah. his dog in the car, I believe. They were on the way to the vet. And Just it was a horrible him, yeah. thing. It was very sick. And I think yeah. they finally got to the vet and that's where they had to make the call. So, mm -hmm. so he's been through a lot and I, I will get a hold of him at some point and um, yeah. hopefully have a, hopefully I can get him on here and we can talk and do an interview with him and talk yeah. more about Uber and how it is on the West coast compared to what we're dealing with here. Yeah. yeah it would be interesting. It yeah. would be. Well, Ray, it's been a pleasure. Um, I try to oh. keep my I try to keep them under uh, about you know anywhere from twenty minutes to an hour, and you have done very well. Oh well. yeah, we've well. got a lot of other things to talk about. There's so to much to talk about. I mean, we could go yeah. on days just to get yeah. caught up on everything. Oh yeah, and mm -hmm. and I would really love, like I said, I love to have you back on for uh, you know a second one, and then get caught up on your book situation. Mm -hmm. And then we can, you know, go over some other things because we haven't even touched base. Your whole military career is very, it's very colorful. Oh, and you've God, done yeah. so much out there that we'd have to put it into definitely a second podcast. Oh, sure. great, great. I'll be, I'll be waiting for. I that want coming. you to be safe. I know you're up there in New York, yeah. and I want you to be safe coming home. If it's now two o'clock, the traffic's uh -huh. not as bad as it used to be. I know, but just be yeah. careful coming back. You've got a long drive to get home. You you know for the last for the closing theme you should put like Escape from New York the John Carpenter. <laughs> I'm trying to get out of here. I can't. So you want me to <laughs> wait a minute? Okay, what's that song that you want? You want me to put it's, Escape from New York? Yeah, from John Carpenter. It's, oh, oh, oh my god! You remember gosh. that song? Oh, that, that, I that do. That little techno thing. Oh my god! That, that, that oh my god! Yeah. Uh, yes, Escape from that. New York. I have <laughs> yes. it right here. Yeah. I've oh, don't forget that picture. Did, did you get my picture that I sent you for the Verizona? Uh, yes. You know what? Okay. I may use that for the cover if you want me to, or I may pick something else, but I'm going to put something. 
I do have that photo, and we'll definitely put that in the YouTube podcast. Yeah. Um, but yes, I've got the main title of John Carpenter, Escape from New York. We are going to yeah. throw that in on the end. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll Unless you got you. another one, we got prison introduction. <laughs> oh, uh, well, you could do that. It's like it's almost like that. Oh my There's God, a I'm lot old. of stuff on here, but we'll we could do the main, the, the main track, theme. the main the, title, the main track. Yeah, okay. so everyone's gonna yeah. learn that. It's like, oh my God, Ray's Ray's in prison now. No. But... <laughs> we will we will bring that in on the end here. So okay. I want you, and I once I have it completed, you'll get a copy yeah. of it. You can share it with all your friends. I'm sure. going to make sure that it gets into the group. I don't know who the administrators are anymore. I don't know if Drew is. But we could share <laughs> yeah. that in the groups. I think yeah. people would be interested, the ones that especially know you. And oh, we yeah. will get oh, it out there. It'll be on my IG. It'll be on the uh -huh. YouTube. It'll it'll be all over the place. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Martha. You're welcome. And call me anytime. If you I will. Ever... And if you get in a jam anytime, you know you can still call me. I know can. that. But Yes, Ever. I do. Oh, Even yeah. though I'm up here in the crazy um, Bucks County, in Bucks County, where all the gangsters <laughs> and everybody are running around and stealing horses and stealing <laughs> jewels like they did back in the 17 and 1800s. Uh, <laughs> no truck deals there. No truck no, deals. No, in Bucks there's County. shootings up here, though. <laughs> shootings. We've got oh my shootings. God. Is, is it, it or not? Like East East Side. Chester, right? <laughs> it's not quite that <laughs> bad, but we've got them here, believe it or not. People are like, what? Oh. Bucks County? Yes, we do. Yeah, Bucks County. <laughs> it's here. It's here. So, it's wild buck. It's the it's wild, wild, wild buck. east, not the wild, yeah. wild west. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Martha. Well, you're Thanks welcome. I want you, like I said, be safe driving home, okay? I will. All right. Okay, you Let's be safe, care. too. I will. Thanks. Take Thanks. care. Okay. Bye-bye. Everybody. This is John Carpenter, Escape from New York, and we just had the privilege to speak.